Got a lot going on, and let's jump gears. Senator Bill Cassidy joins us. Senator Cassidy, how you doing, sir? Moon Griffon, I am fantastic, man. Well, good, man. I'm glad everything's going well. I mean, I know uh, they, they <laughs> I, you know, I never did get your take on this, and I don't have to, I, on the Trump and what's going on. I mean, it's, it, I'm, my, I'm, just one question, is, is this, does this bother you like it, it's starting to bother people? And I'm not talking about against against Trump. It just bothers the way this is all coming down. Does it bother you at all? No, you talk- I'm, I know none of y'all have really made a lot of comments on it. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should. But it's starting to really bother me the way all this is going down because Hillary and Obama and the Justice Department were able to do whatever they wanted to when, when Obama was in office, and, and a lot of it illegal, it looks like. Does it bother you at all? or Just, just your comment on it, then we'll move on. You're talking about the investigation. Yeah, the, the whole investigation. It, it, you know, I'm just asking off the record. It really bothers me. I mean, it really bothers me. I mean, Mueller was appointed to investigate a crime, and now it seems like he's investigating a person. Yeah, yeah. But and I, the, 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 whole, the whole Stormy Daniel thing, uh, you know, it speaks for itself. On the other hand, it's got nothing to do with Russian collusion. And yeah, that's the thing about uh, it is and, when and that, when, M- M- when Mueller took over this thing, why wasn't it defined? Here's what you can investigate: anything to do with collusion, anything to do with collusion. And I, that's why that's why I'm asking if it's bothering you because it's bothering people every day that they continue to go along with this charade. So, so there's this this private citizen after they raid Cohen's office, who just happened to be a fundraiser for the Republican Party who Cohen had helped fix some relationship. It's a messy scene. It's ugly, et cetera. But it's between a private citizen and another private citizen, and there was nothing involved with anything, and the information's released. Now, as unseemly as it is, whatever this guy was doing, having a lawyer fix his affair for him, it's a private matter. It's not illegal. That should not have been released to the public. Yeah. Yeah, but I... I think I do so think I think you touch, I think you touched upon something, though, Senator. You touched upon something. This is personal. I don't think there's anything to do with legal. I don't think there's anything to do with anything anything to do with anything. I think it's all personal. We don't like Trump. We don't like an outsider. This is the deep state. This is the swamp. And I'll be dang. I mean, look at Comey. Look at Clinton. Look at Obama. Look at the Justice Department. They use the IRS on people. They use the FBI on people. They use the Joe Judge. I mean. Wow, what does a citizen like me or Brandon Como have a chance if you're not some multi-millionaire being that even fight anything with people like this? You know, no matter what your political party, you may hate Trump, but this is going too far afield, way too far afield. And by the way, after the Ken Starr investigation, on a bipartisan basis, folks say, you know, Kim was supposed to investigate this. It ended up spending way out of it, cost millions of taxpayer dollars, took several years. It just went too far. We've learned our lesson. And on a bipartisan basis, people said, let's rein it in. Um, and some provisions were put to rein it in. You investigate a crime, not a person. Uh, and now uh, it seems like we're in the same situation. Uh, this is just too much, man. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, Senator Bill Cassidy. All right, Pompeo's in. Uh, talk a little bit about yeah, him. I, by, the, good by, man. by the way, they were trying to say that he might not make it, but he actually got, I think, 58 votes, which right now in this time and day, that's a pretty good number of votes. When the guy graduates first in his class at West Point, he graduates from Harvard Law School. By the way, he never told me that. You know, he just... We knew each other. We were on the committee, sat next to each other, and he never mentioned any of that. So he's kind of a regular guy, too. He's the kind of guy that you would sit and watch a game with. Um, and and people are just going after him, and they're going after him uh, just because he's Trump pick. Uh, he's eminently qualified uh, at a time when we need a foreign policy team in place, and folks were, so folks were opposing him. Uh, I just thought that, again, was beyond the pale. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, once again, he ended up getting 58 votes in this day and time with the division in Washington. 58 probably wasn't a bad number. 
I can tell you, Republicans voted for John Kerry and Hillary Clinton, not because they approved of him, but rather because they figured on foreign policy the president should be able to pick his team. Mm -hmm. So we've got a long tradition of folks getting 74 votes and 89 votes and 96 votes. So I'm glad we got 58, but it should have been more. Yeah, no doubt about it. But, hey, he's done. All right, Kyle Duncan uh, confirmed, and uh, is he already confirmed and done? He is confirmed, done. For folks who don't know of Kyle, he's a Louisiana man who has just incredible uh, judicial temperament. He's represented cases uh, that have gone to the Supreme Court, including the Hobby Lobby case, uh, which is why the left hated the guy. And, and also they hate him because he's so good, they fear that he'll be very influential. He's in his 40s. He's now been appointed. The president nominated him. We finally got him through the Senate to the uh, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in uh, based in New Orleans. And, again, as a young man, he could serve on there for 35 years. Uh, just a generational change, a fantastic jurist. One person who voted against him told me he's good. He could be on the Supreme Court one day. So I think Louisiana can be proud. It was a struggle to get him through, but we got him through. Great pick by the president. Yeah. Now, I, I want to throw one more at you. Uh, Wendy Vitter, has she, uh, I know she went through the process. Have they voted her up and down? What's the chances of her becoming a federal judge? We've not had a floor vote yet. I think okay. we will get Wendy through. Uh, but, uh, again, as you can imagine, the resistance hates Donald Trump. That's number one. Number two, they don't like pro-life judges. Number three, they, don't, they really don't like women pro-life judges because that defeats their narrative that you can't be a smart woman and be a conservative. And, and by, so, by the way, by the way w- Wendy Vitter, as I watch some of this, she she left no doubt where she was. She was a pro lifer. She didn't she didn't try to hide oh, she, it or nothing. She just stood up. She laid it up. She didn't care what they thought. Well, let's face it. She's been the counsel for the Catholic diocese based in New Orleans for a number of years. Mm-hmm. But her resume speaks for itself. She was a prosecutor when she first came out, and she tells me that they were laying people off, didn't have enough money. She took a part-time job at McDonald's so that she could she continue to be a prosecutor. Wow. Uh, she just wanted to do it so much. At some point, she moved on in her law practice, but for a number of years, that's what she did. Uh, uh, so she's seen a whole breadth of criminal law and religious liberty law, etc. She's going to be a great pick, but the left hates her. Oh, it's no doubt. But but it's no doubt she'll pass. It seems like that's that's not going to be a problem. You know, I think uh, she, it'll be a, pretty much a party line vote. She's going to get fifty votes, um, and uh, uh, but I think she'll be appointed. But you know, I never count chickens until they're home roosting. Well, they did. did she did the when's the vote? You, you think the the vote should be soon? I mean, they, they've already went through the committee. I mean, what does it normally take? Yeah, they a few went weeks, the a month, what? We got we got a whole lineup of folks. We're gonna when we come back. I think we're going to vote on six different circuit court judges, you know, like Fifth Circuit, Ninth Circuit, Eleventh Circuit, just one step below the Supreme Court. So that's going to be the priority. Uh, I don't know when this has got it lined up. You know, one thing that's been going on, Moon, we've talked about it before, but Schumer has been doing everything he can, Chuck Schumer, sure, sure. to delay our process, yeah. requiring 30 hours of debate. And so we finally broke that log jam, but there's kind of a – uh, a backlog, if you will, of getting people through. Yeah, I was going to ask you if it's still going slow in the process because of the left. It is still, it's, it's going a lot better than it was, but again, we got a backlog. So even though it's going better, we got to work through the backlog. Yeah, no doubt about it. Senator Bill Cassidy, my special guest. Take a quick break. Come back, wrap up with Senator Cassidy, 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline, Trump's approval, 50%, Brandon, staying right up there. Nobody's buying into this craziness that's happening in Washington. All right, we'll take a break. Be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. Senator Bill Cassidy. My special guest, and uh, we're talking about kind of what's going on in Baton Rouge 
and I'm sorry, Washington, not Baton Rouge. Now, those days are over. Um, all right. We had tax reform, and I know you got an effort to protect tax reform. What What is the protection for? What, what do they think they're trying to do? In terms of the tax reform package? Yes, sir. So the leftists, <laughs> so Schumer and Pelosi want to repeal it. Now, we're seeing people getting more money in their paycheck, more take-home pay. We're seeing small businesses getting more money to reinvest in their companies. We're getting job growth like we haven't seen job growth for eight years. Um, wages starting to increase. Uh, people making long-term capital investment, uh, which means that we're going to have further job growth and further wage growth. And Schumer and Pelosi want to repeal it. You're thinking, my gosh, you must have just gone to Denver. Um, so, <laughs> that was my first thought. She was living in Denver now. Yeah, tough. Totally. So we just got to beat this back. Yeah, what, now, what, 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 part, house. what part of everybody prospering, a lot of people prospering and having more money, what part of that do they not like? That's what I don't understand. What they don't like is they're afraid. They are so sure they're going to win in November in the Senate and the House races. And the left is so energized. What they don't want is for the conservatives to say, wait a second, they're threatening us. We're getting better paychecks. We're getting better jobs. And, and, and we're going to go out and vote to protect it. They want everybody a little confused. Well, maybe it's not working for me. Because then the anger of the left against Trump will carry them to majorities in the House and the Senate. And it's a mess, man. But we on the right need to get engaged because otherwise they're going to do every trick they can, including threatening the prosperity that has come along with the Trump presidency in order for them to get back in political power. So, Senator Cassidy, this is uh, Brandon Como, and I'm curious, uh, along the lines of what we're talking about here with the prosperity, did you see yesterday that there was a poll that came out that is actually showing that millennials are starting to turn away from Democrats and starting to turn more towards Republicans, and they're doing so because they because they believe that Republicans have more um, sound financial ideas. I think that's very interesting as it relates to the conversation that that you and Moon are having right now when it comes to the tax cuts and why Democrats are trying to repeal it. Hey, man, millennials are about freedom. They want the ability to prosper, just like everybody else. And they got a little bit different terms as it comes, but nonetheless, that's what they want. Now, we had a lot of millennials postponing marriage, if they were married, postponing kids, uh, living in parents' basements because they couldn't afford a home. And all of a sudden, you see the job market blossoming, and you see opportunity, and you see people getting married, you see folks having kids. There is an optimism that has come along. Now, my gosh, uh, millennials are smart. They're going to look up and say, huh, all of a sudden, I got a little extra money in my pocket. I can start thinking about buying a house. That's a good thing. I'm hoping that they will vote that way come November because I can tell you, Pelosi and Schumer take back over. They are going to. They want to reverse the strides we've made. No doubt about it. A uh, couple quick things before I let you go. Uh, opioid crisis. Uh, anything being done with that yet? Anything? That can, my question is: any can any, can anything be done? Yeah, absolutely, things can be done. There's several aspects to it. One aspect, we're working on increased treatment. We're working on making sure that the people treating are accountable for the best practices. We're trying to decrease the supply. One thing that my office is doing that's a little unique, we're also looking at how the cartels finance the drug trade. The cartels move, Mexican cartels move about $110 billion with a B, dollars a year from the United States to Mexico. The, the, our, our federal government captures about $7 billion of it, so, so chump change, if you will. They're moving at least $100 billion a year by all reports. If we can capture that money, we put a crimp on the cartel's ability to move drugs. And wouldn't it be great if we capture more of that money, we use it to build a wall? It wouldn't be the Mexican government paying for the wall. It would be the Mexican cartels, and that's probably the better group to pay for it. But we would secure our border and put a crimp on illegal drugs flowing to our country. That's what we're working on. Yeah, it'd be, be interesting to see 
you know, how to shut that down. I know it's a big problem. Some people say they need their drugs. I don't think you're really talking about people like that, but I think you're talking about the overuse and the misuse of it. People with chronic pain need relief from their chronic pain. Mm -hmm. But there's a family that was in Baton Rouge, has moved to Lafayette, lost their 17-year-old boy. The day he came out of rehab, the pusher finds him. The pusher finds him and wants to keep a customer, gives him something laced with fentanyl. Uh, the kid's just after two weeks of rehab, still not prepared for the real world, ends up relapsing, takes the drug, and he dies. 17-year-old boy dies from illegal drugs. I mean, that story is told over and over we got to stop that. Yeah. All right. Senator Bill Cassidy, thank you so much. We'll visit again. Thank you, man. All right. Appreciate the call. All right. We got to take a break.